Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of On The Avenue. Are you tired of me yet? That's okay, I won't be before you long. I want to quickly get into the episode because we have some exciting stuff for you today. We're calling this episode Intentionality of Art on the Avenue. That sounds real good, doesn't it? I know. You know that big piece of art hanging in the atrium? That was done by one of our very own deacons here at the church. So we'll speak with him today here at the University of Houston downtown. But before we do, let's take a field trip over to the Wallop Senior Residence to speak with Ms. Cheryl Lawson to take a little, talk a little bit about Reverend Lawson's artwork. Okay, everyone, I am here with Ms. Cheryl Lawson. We are at the Wallop Center, the senior residence, right? Yes. That's correct. Um, we are here to talk about Reverend Lawson's artwork. She's going to tell us all about it. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right. All what right. is your earliest memory of him being an artist? Oh, he was always an artist. Yeah. Um, when my dad was a teenager, he wanted to be a cartoonist, he wanted to work for Walt Disney, actually. And uh, so he uh, drew all the time, was always making amazing art. And his mother came in contact with Walt Disney because mm. he had been a reporter in Kansas and my dad is from Kansas. And so she told Walt Disney, this young man who was getting his career started about her son. And he said to her that when the young man grew up, when my dad grew up, that he should look up Walt Disney and he'd be able to get a job there. Mm -hmm. So that was my very first memory of my dad as an artist, as a boy mm -hmm. wanting to be a cartoonist, to do cartoons with Walt Disney. But along the way, God came in and uh, gave daddy some real clear images of how he couldn't choose that career for himself. Um, first off, you gotta go back. My dad was born in 1928. And so as a young man, this would have been in the early 40s, late 30s of uh, 1900s. And so he remembers having three near misses with his hand. Uh, wow. One time a knife that he was using kind of got loose and he got a very deep cut on his hand. One time he was horse playing with his brother and they kind of tumbled into the hot stove that was in the house. And so he realized mm -hmm. that God was telling him mm -hmm. that cartooning was not gonna be his career. So he became a pastor, became a minister, chose to be in the ministry because God wanted him to do that. But he always was an artist. And so when we were little, the church was tiny. He had a silk screening business and he used to do all of the logos for the local schools. So the Jack Yates Tiger and okay. all of those things, they would use the logos that he designed and then he would create the screen prints, sweatshirts, mm -hmm. you know, um, t-shirts, and they would sell the screen prints. And that was their business. It was called Spirit Associates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. Kind of connected back yeah. to the Holy Spirit. And so my dad has always been interested in art. Uh, for all the years of the church, he was the one that always did the anniversary logos. So if you look back at the 25th year or the 14th year, mm -hmm. all of those logos were designed by daddy. So he was always 25th into and art. 14th, right? Because I want to <laughs> well, look them the, up. <laughs> the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the wow, 11th, yeah. the 12th, every single year we yeah. always had a logo. And until his retirement in 42, when he was, when the church was 42 years old, he designed every single logo for every single anniversary. Wow. So he's always been an artist. Um, when he retired, one of the things he got back into, frankly, was a little bit more into the creative art, okay. not just the logo design, not just the sort of the, 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 uh, he, he, he came in contact with a church member uh, who's gone on to saint in memory and she was in an art class and so he started being in an art class with her and he painted a bunch of pieces mm -hmm. that he brought to the house and we were all very excited about and so i hope you'll get a chance to see some of his actual art my dad loves color and he loves style so when you look at his art what you see are things that really reflect um, you know our african heritage the kind of sense of community uh, he's always been very creative in his thinking and that comes through, I think, in not just the art that he designs, but the things that he likes yeah. as well. How do you think him being an artist translate into his sermon planning? How the way he like the, the way he <laughs> illustrates his sermon, how do you think him being an artist kind of like plays into that? That's a great question. When I listen to him preach, and of course I don't listen to him preach anymore unless mm -hmm. I'm listening to tapes from the old days. But when I listen to him preach, he's, he paints a story. Mm -hmm. 
And so if you listen, he carries you kind of down a path, whether it's a scriptural path, whether it's a connection to the current events. Uh, he's always been a man, I think, who is able to internalize and then present things in a way that are colorful and that are clear and that you can kind of follow along. It's, it's, it's just a gift that God gave him to be able to do that. Yeah. Do you remember it being kind of like a hard transition for him or a challenge to really um, give up that dream of being a cartoonist to be a pastor or a preacher in general? Well, first off, let me remind you, I was not yet here. Yeah. Uh, this was his uh, teenage years. But do you remember him like talking about it? I know that he wanted to be a cartoonist. Mm -hmm. I know that very, very clearly. And I know that um, many preachers recount that when they are called, they know they are called. Mm -hmm and that they fight, many of them, not all of them, but many of them, they fight the call. They say, oh, no, 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 I wanna do this. No, 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 I wanna have this kind of life. No, 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 this was my plan. And I think that my dad did that as many ministers do. Mm -hmm. um, but we all know that when God has his, his eye on you, you're gonna go down that road. Right. And so I'm glad that daddy agreed or you know conceded. So are we. And, re <laughs> and recognized that it is exactly the right thing for him to do. Um, because he was able in the young church to also do his art. Mm -hmm. He was able to do the logos. He was able to make the, you know, the backdrops and so many things that he loved to do um, until the church got to be a really mature institution. Mm -hmm. He was our primary artist. Right. And for a long time, we benefited from the art creativity that he brought to the church as well. And I love that he was able to still follow what God had for him, but also include his passion into that. I love that. Okay, so tell me, what is one of your favorite art pieces of his? So, um, first off, I love them all mm -hmm. because they're his. Um, but there's a piece that he has that I think is just so beautiful because it's, it's a man and a boy. And um, my dad has always been, um, you know, one of his, one of the quotes that I like of his is, you know, don't look up, look down. Always reach back and grab the person behind you. Always help mm. someone else. And that to me tells that story. You know, a man caring for his son, um, you know, somebody looking after the generation behind them. I think that that is a clear picture in my mind. I keep that picture in my office okay. I because I think it's a beautiful picture and it's simple. Um, and, you know, that's, that's something that's also, in tr also true about my dad. His painting is not um, uh, grand. It is color, it is thought, and it is, and it is, and it is simple. It's intentional. Intentional, mm -hmm. that's a good word, mm -hmm. it's intentional. Would you consider yourself artistic? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to be creative I've, in some way. I'm very creative, but I'm not artistic. Okay. Um, I think um, you can be creative with language. That's true. And so I have creative language skill. Um, but I've never had an artistic bone in my body. <laughs> That's funny. Is any of your siblings or? Mm, no, not really. Yeah, That's it so stops funny. with him. That it is so funny. Him. Well, you're a beautiful storyteller, so that, that could be creative. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. I really enjoyed just learning about Reverend Lawson because I think some of the stuff that you actually told us, a lot of us didn't know. So yeah. I appreciate you for that. And thank you for your time, really. Thank you so much. Of course. Okay, so we just left Wallop Senior Residence to talk to Cheryl Lawson about Reverend Lawson's artwork. Now we're actually at UH downtown to speak with Floyd Newson, who's actually a decent deacon at the church, to speak a little bit about his artwork. Let's take a look. Mr. Floyd. Hello, Amber. How are you? I'm good. Welcome How are to you? my studio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a mess, but hey. Hey, that's what artists are. A mess. A good mess. That's though, true. A beautiful mess. That's okay. Very true. So tell me what's going on here. What do you do here? Okay, well, uh, we're on the campus of U of H downtown. Right. Where I've uh, been a professor for like 47, 48 years. And they've uh, graced me with a space for all that all that time. Mm -hmm. Actually, in about another year, I, I will build. I'm going to build me a studio. But uh, this is where I work daily, even sometimes Saturday and Sunday after church. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is this is my domain. This is where uh, I create. And so these works, a lot of these works are going to be on the show that I'm having in May. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so when he told me about the show happening in May, he didn't tell me that he was being honored. And Coach Leah actually just told me today that you were being honored. Yeah. Wow. Well, well the honor is to have a retrospective, mm -hmm. my first, okay? 
in uh, the show May Travel. Mm -hmm. It's uh, this museum, if you've ever been to the camp, the Contemporary Arts Museum here in Houston, mm -hmm. the museum is twice that size. Wow. It specializes in contemporary art. And so uh, they asked about a year and a half ago when I uh, considered doing the show there, and I said yes. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> this show hopefully will be accompanied by a book on me, which Texas A&M is publishing. Okay. Now it may not be there in May, but the show goes from May to October. And, and if it travels, hopefully the book is published by that time so that they complement each other. Um, there are two curators for this show. Mm -hmm. Mark Savanka, the director of OK Gallery here at U of H downtown, mm -hmm. and Lauren Cross, who's a new curator at the Hunting, Huntington Museum in California. So it, it's, it's indeed a, a pleasure. Uh, I'm excited about it. It's a whole lot of work. There's a lot of stuff you have to do right. to make a show. I mean, we have a lot of Zoom meetings. In fact, I have a Zoom meeting on on Thursday with the staff at the Madison. We're trying to make sure that we know exactly what's going to be in there, the title of the show, and, and, and the people who are going to be picking up the work. And they pick up the work from, from California to New York. Mm -hmm. So there's work in a lot of places in this country. Any of your pieces here? Yes. At the show? Yes, yes. Which ones? That piece will be in the show. Okay. That piece will be in the show. This is one of your recent works. Yeah, this is one of my recent works. Yes, this is a, this is a gouache. A gouache what is on, it called? A gouache on paper. The gouache okay. is a medium. In fact, this is gouache. Okay. It's a, it's a water-based paint. Okay. It's thicker than, 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 than uh, watercolor. Mm -hmm. So with, with gouache, I could paint black <clears throat> and then put white on it and it will stay white. Oh. Or I could put yellow over that black and it will stay yellow. Whereas watercolor, they fuse together mm -hmm. and get muddy. Mm -hmm. So this piece is a nine piece and it has one of the things that I've been doing for a while. It has my great grandmother, great grandmother Janie. I see her right there. And you, she's in there probably about 20 some times. Okay. And, and she is my, uh, one of my ancestors that I, uh, I just love and adore. And uh, she was uh, frugal with money. She, she was so gifted. Mm -hmm. They considered her apron magical. She was a cook mm -hmm. for white people, okay? And, and uh, when she passed away, she had some money. And one of my aunts, I think, took the possession of that money and invested. So maybe 20 something years ago, I got $6,000. Well, I'm one of many in my family who got money like that from a woman who had no education, hmm. worked as a servant, uh, 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 a, a cook. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, that's you have powerful. to be proud of your ancestors. Then what is this little Oh, right okay, here? so that's a cow. Okay, so you notice there's a black and white cow here, mm -hmm. there's a, a black and white panda, yeah. and a black and white penguin. Well, I use those as symbols of, of, of us getting together, the okay. races getting together. Okay. Just because they're white and black. White and black, okay. exactly. That's gotcha. that's symbolic. And so and so I, I'm glad you caught that because a lot of people don't see those little things in there. Were you intentional with these animals in particular? Yeah. Because there's because a zebra. The, yeah, but there's a I have a zebra, oh. but not in this work. Okay. Yeah. So anything that's black and white, I will put in my work okay. you know, on occasions because it's it's about race relations and about, you know, people if we understand each other. And get to know each other and talk to each other and don't rely on tv stereotypes yeah. then the world could be a better place i love that mm -hmm. yeah what about this little the ladder well the ladder my dad was one of the first african-american firefighters in the south really 1955. they also were uh, 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 12 here in houston but in memphis the okay 12... i was born in memphis oh yeah well then you your parents probably know know of my dad what's the name floyd Floyd, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to ask. And so there were eleven others, and they were stationed in station number eight. Okay. Downtown on Crump. Okay. Yeah. And and Mississippi Boulevard, and uh, that that station has been torn down now. They have have a new one, but my dad and those guys went through hell mm -hmm. trying to be firefighters because of the racism. I bet. So the, the latter honors my father. It honors my father. Let me see what it's else. It's hope. It's rescue. It's renewal. It's essential. Do all of your pieces have little hidden messages in them like this? Not all of them. Okay. 
but quite a few of them. But quite a few of them. Well, this is interesting because, uh, well, this came from a tragedy okay. because Pastor's sister had passed away okay. and went up to the funeral. And Lake Michigan was frozen. And I was, uh, I went to visit uh, Reverend Lawson in his room with, with some other deacons. And um, they were in the W. Mm -hmm. You know, the W is a mm -hmm. plush place. Yeah. And it overlooked Lake Michigan. Me being an artist, I'm observing everything. I look out the window and the, the lake is frozen with circles. Now there are no circles really in this one, but this is called Winter in Chicago, Day and Night. Okay, so, so this is a piece together, right? Okay. Yeah, so that that that's why that, that my my incentive, my 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 impulse, my my motivation, stimuli came from being in Chicago at a tragic event, mm -hmm. uh, and I I did two paintings really based on my 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 adventure there. And this is going to be at the it's, show. It's going to be in the show. Okay. Yeah. So these things will be framed, you know, uh, when 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 the show uh, happens. In fact, we have, uh, like I said, a meeting on Thursday, so we can time when I got to get everything framed, mm -hmm. and then the, the the movers come and get the work and create it up and take it to uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Well, as beautiful as your studio is, there's other pieces elsewhere in this building, right? Oh yes. Okay, let's go to let's go okay. check it out. Let's go see those pieces. Four three. Okay, Deacon Newsom. So tell me where we're at right now. Okay, this is the uh, uh, third floor, and this is about criminal justice. But see, the four paintings uh, represent success for our students. The four paintings in this building. In the, in the building, okay. right? Each 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 one sometimes covers a different discipline, but the narrative in summarizing why they exist is because. Our students are special students, mm -hmm. at least to us. Mm -hmm. We have small classes, so we give them special attention. They, they, they get a great education here, and they give us a great opportunity to help them. So the title of the four paintings is Contemplating Success. Mm -hmm. Our students are thinking about moving up, you know, becoming lawyers and doctors and engineers, firefighters, you know, whatever. And so each level is, 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 is an illustration of how one could think about where they are now mm -hmm. and where they're going to end up. Mm -hmm. You know, their latter days will be better than their former, former days, days yep. you see. And so, so it, 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 is, uh, uh, it was my desire to make them very colorful. Uh, you'll see some repetitive motifs like my ladders and whimsical forms. Uh, uh, you'll see the pencil, which, which, which means we gotta really work hard. It's some Spanish layer for law, you know, so, that, so because this campus is 55% Hispanic, but that was done almost 20 years ago. Yeah. And at that time, uh, the Hispanic population wasn't as large as it is now. So this is a, exp wow. a Hispanic uh, uh, Latin American uh, serving institution. The and fact that you included that in there and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the evolution problem. of it becoming really 55% yeah. yeah. Hispanic. That's wow. that's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Wow. OK, well, thank you for that. Let's go back to the studio and talk okay. a little bit more about okay. that piece that you have in the atrium. I'm curious about it. Three. OK, so we know you did the piece in the atrium that we have at Wheeler Avenue. Right. Could you tell me a little bit about it? I see you have a little model. Over yeah, there. well, this this is the last uh study for the, for that for that 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 installation that relief i thought i had i had a piece that was like 24 by something mm. i thought that was the final mm. and then they said well to make something 38 feet mm. long 16 <laughs> feet tall i had to wow. make the scale larger yeah so a project i worked on for more than a year at least probably a year and two months mm. and so this was the final representation of it and uh, in, in one of those boxes over there, I have the scale, the exact scale model mm -hmm. in the same material as in the atrium. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that material? 
it's plastic. Like a, it's oh, a plastic. I was it's say, a plastic. It's like a thick acrylic. Yeah, it's a plastic. Okay. Yeah. And then it's I know a, mm-hmm. we spoke a little bit before, actually mm-hmm. at church, about your right. piece. Uh-huh. And I remember all of the little hidden messages in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, could you speak to those a little bit for okay. us? Well, well okay. So th- th- there's sort of a narrative. Uh, this is where the white building, the, the church started with a little white building. And uh, with Reverend Lawson uh, starting, you know, the, the church. And I, I wanted to deal with how it started and where it is now. Mm-hmm. So there were 13 chartered members. These 13 the fish. fish mm-hmm. are the chartered members. And then they multiplied. There's about a hundred and something fish in here. Very subtle, very subtle. But they're yeah. everywhere. They're like outlines, yeah. Yeah, and, and then some of, you know, very, very bright. That is the growth of the church. Wow. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, we, 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 we are commissioned to, you know, to be disciples and to, and to, and to grow the church. Mm-hmm. And so Pastor Lawson and Mrs. Lawson were, were the, the, the beginning and Pastor Cosby is now uh, uh, our, our pastor. Is there and a representation his, of Cosby? In this no, he's one? not. In, okay. fact, in fact, he told me, don't put me in there. Of course. He's a very, oh, Pastor Cosby yeah. is a very humble person. He is. And, and uh, he said, don't do that. Because <laughs> I did it in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, no, take me out. Yeah. That's how he is. And so th- there are things uh, in here for like Jonah and the whale. Oh, yes. I remember that. We couldn't figure out where the whale was. Yeah, where here's the whale. There's the whale's like eye. Conversation piece behind Yeah. Him. Noah's Ark. I had several trips to, to uh, the zoo to, to photograph all these animals. And then I got a, I paid a guy to Photoshop them to put them together. This, this woman here, uh, is there because the woman is is the pearl of the church to me. Mm-hmm. She's the nurturer. Mm-hmm. She's the one who, a lot of times, does most of the work. Right. You know. And so I wanted I wanted to honor the women of the church. So they're pearls, showing the jewels that, oh, that wow. she's precious. Yeah. You see. And so uh, that was. These are the three, other than uh, these animals that are really, really realistic. Mm-hmm. And then you have the Bible verses. Were you intentional with yeah, those? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Jeremiah 29, 11 talks about us, uh, God's plan for us, of, for a future to prosper, mm-hmm. okay? It, it, it deals with uh, uh, the issue of, of when you look at Adam and Eve uh, in Genesis 1 and 27 and Genesis uh, 2, 7, 21, 2, 23 talks about the creation of, of man and woman. And where were they? They were in Africa, and and so, and so I embellish things. Uh, uh, the cross is, is 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 essential. I mean, we have three crosses over here in the church, uh, uh, and then there's an eye over two of them. And then you have an eye over here. Yeah, too. this is the main eye. This is the eye of God. Okay. Because God is Hebrews four thirteen deals with 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 and this God. Is, this is the garden. That's the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Right, and God sees everything. Mm-hmm. He watches over everything. So. This is the this is the most important eye, but the eye of God then becomes here and over there. My whole point was to have some of a narrative, to have some something for when the kids would come down to the atrium, they can look at it and and and, and figure out, well, what is that? You know, have a conversation. The adults it's also, a conversation piece. you know, uh, hopefully they will take me, you know, and use a what do you call it, a QR code? What you, <laughs> that thing? What's that thing called? Yeah, QR code. Yeah, yeah. So they can. You know, know what I, yeah, what my work is all about. Oh yeah, that that would be yeah, that would yeah. be good. Some of the scriptures don't really uh, uh, have a meaning in the set for the section, but then there are those that deal with the section that that they exist in. So it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, a whole lot of work, but it was a work of joy. Yeah. That's what I am. I'm, a, I'm an artist. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for explaining this because I know people go in the atrium. Yeah. They're looking at it yeah. like, what is this? What is yeah. that? And so yeah. now they can look at this uh-huh. and able to yeah. understand what's happening in this piece. The funny part, though, was that it was up for several, several months and folks would pass by and they didn't even see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I said, oh, wow. That's... And then one day they're like, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right what there. They, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 uh, uh, it, it's a joy to have it there. And I'm very well, proud. 
thank you so much, Deacon Floyd Newsom. Sorry, I called you Deacon Floyd Newsom. That's right. no, 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 no. So <laughs> but thank you so much for talking with me today. And thank you all for tuning in with us. Please make sure you are following us on all of our social media websites because we're definitely going to be posting about your um, upcoming show, May 6th. No, well, actually, I don't have a firm date. Okay. It's in May, though. Well, just keep up with us on social media and you'll be sure to know, okay? Well, thank you. Thank you. And thank Amber. you all for watching. I'll see you next time on The Avenue. Bye. Bye-bye.